Hey everyone, it's Miriam and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a lot of books to haul. So I'm just gonna get started because I will be here for a while if I don't. So it was my birthday in November and I managed to accumulate quite the collection. Um, but a lot of these books I also got in September and October and a lot of them are actually secondhand. So it's nice that I was able to find a lot at my local thrift stores, my uh, local used bookstore. So I'm going to be sharing these uh, by genre. I'm going to start with some poetry and then work my way towards historical fiction, which I think is the last genre in the piles. So yeah, without further ado, these are the books I have collected in the last few months. So I'm going to start off with the poetry collections I found. And this one I found at my local used bookstore and was really happy to find it. This is Poems and Prose by Christina Rossetti. So I know she wrote The Goblin Market, which is pretty popular, and I do want to read The Goblin Market. And it's actually in this edition, which I'm really happy about, but this also has some of her uh, prose, so it's not just her poems. And I've heard really good things about Christina Rossetti. Um, I heard she gets really deep into a lot of, I guess, human struggles and things like that. So I am really curious to see what I think about her. And yeah, this is the first poetry collection and prose that I uh, that I found and I'm really excited to get into this. The next poetry collection I picked up is actually another poetry and prose collection and that is by Percy Bysshe Shelley and I have heard amazing things about him and not only that I actually read a few of his poems and loved them so I'm really really curious to see what I think about his prose because I haven't read anything other than his poetry. So yeah, I'm really excited to try this out and see what I think. This next book is not only a poetry collection, it's also a work of art and I shared it in my December TBR because I really, really want to read it. And that's The Lost Spells by Robert McFarlane. And the illustrator is Jackie Morris. Her artwork is just stunning. Some of the most beautiful watercolor paintings I've ever seen. Um, so this poetry collection is really just an ode to wildlife and nature and I read I think the first poem that is all about foxes it was adorable and I just I can't wait to read through this whole book so yeah that's the lost spells so these next two books are both Shakespeare plays and the first one is Romeo and Juliet and then we also have A Midsummer Night's Dream so I have read both of these um I think that was back in high school so it was a while ago maybe six or seven years um I do want to reread them because I really enjoy Shakespeare I'll probably watch like YouTube videos of the plays as I go along just because I really like that visual aspect of it. So yeah, that's The Midsummer Night's Dream and Romeo and Juliet. So the next books I'm going to share with you guys are classics that I found and most of them I actually found secondhand, which is great. So the first one I'm going to share is Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. I don't know much about it other than it takes place around the time of the Civil War in America. I know it has to do with slavery, if I'm not mistaken, which is a pretty heavy topic and I do know a lot of people really, really appreciate this book. A lot of people don't love it as much. So yeah, I'm really curious to see what I think about this one. So the next book is called A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, and this is by James Joyce, who I have read from. I read one of his short stories. I just don't remember what it was called, and I did really enjoy it. So I want to read more of his work, and I like that it's set in Ireland. I've come to find that I actually really, really enjoy books set in Ireland. I don't know why. Ireland, Scotland, and England are probably my three favorite. Uh, settings for any story of any genre. So this book is like a coming of age story and it's meant to portray James Joyce's early life but we it's a fictionalized um, story of his life so yeah. The next book I want to share is Childhood, Boyhood and Youth by Leo Tolstoy and this is the one novel by him that I have not read yet so I've read his three other novels War and Peace, Anna Karenina and Resurrection and this one is basically in a similar vein as James Joyce's story. We have um, a fictionalized Leo Tolstoy and his childhood, boyhood, and his youth. I've been reading through the books by Leo Tolstoy and Charles Dickens with Emmy and Carolyn for their Dickens versus Tolstoy debate. And this is the only one that I haven't gotten to yet. So um, I do need to read this one. And yeah, I'm curious to see what I think about this one because Tolstoy's other books I have pretty strong opinions on, so yeah, that's Childhood, Boyhood, and Youth. These next two books are ones that I can't believe I haven't read yet. They're, you know, they're very well known and they pack a punch from what I've heard, so 
The first one is Animal Farm by George Orwell, and this is just an allegory of the Soviet Union in the 20th century. So I'm really curious to see what I think about that one. And the next one is 1984, also by George Orwell. And this one, all I know is it's a dystopian, totalitarian society and Orwell's take on that. So, and that it takes place in 1984. Um, so yeah, that's 1984. And I'm really, really curious about this one. Um, I know a couple people who have read it and who um, adored it. And then I know other people who found it really boring. And so I'm really curious to see where I stand. These next three classics are ones that I don't know very much about. So I'm just gonna quickly show you them. So the first one is The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. So yeah, I've never read anything by Henry James. I'm curious to see if I uh, end up enjoying this one. The next book is The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. So I read Far From the Matting Crowd and I gave it three stars. It wasn't terrible. Um, I just found the writing to be a little bit dense and the main character Bathsheba, she was just a little, a little annoying. I wasn't the biggest fan. I did like how uh, Hardy writes nature. I think he has beautiful descriptive prose. I just, some parts were, were really dense and were kind of reminiscent of Dickens in a way, but I'm not too sure what this one's about. I'm just curious to see what I think of it as compared to Far From the Matting Crowd. So yeah, that's The Return of the Native. The next one is The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. So all I know about this one is there's a girl named Lily and she's on the hunt for a husband and just a lot of scandal occurs and yeah, takes place in New York if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so I'm curious about this one. This next book is Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. I'm really happy that I found this used. Um, I do have an edition of Alice in Wonderland but I don't have Through the Looking Glass so this way I can have both in one copy. And yeah, it's a really weird story. If you haven't read it, you should. I love it. And yeah, that's Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. These next three books are all by Ella Montgomery, who is one of my absolute favorite authors. So we have Kilmany of the Orchard. Uh, then we have The Story Girl and The Golden Road. Um, so Kilmany of the Orchard, all I know is it's about a mute girl and I guess her love story. And then The Story Girl and The Golden Road is a duology, if I'm not mistaken about a girl named Sarah Stanley who tells really good stories and that's all I know. So yeah, these are my new Ella Montgomery books, which I'm really excited about. So I recently read The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins and loved it so much that I went online right after I finished the book and bought more of his books. Yeah, that's that's my uh, lack of self-control right there. So <laughs> the first one is Poor Miss Finch and this one is about a girl named Lucilla who happens to be blind and this is one thing I love about Wilkie Collins, and I got this just from reading one of his books. He does not write females the way that I've seen other Victorian authors write females. He writes strong women, which I really, really appreciate. They're not all falling and, you know, fainting and crying all the time. Um, and yeah, I just, I really appreciate that. So, and in this one, it seems like we have some disability representation, which is really great um, because the main character, Lucilla, is blind. And in this book, she ends up falling in love with a man named Oscar, but Oscar's brother, who is his twin, seems to be into Lucilla. So it is a bit of a love triangle, which isn't my favorite thing in the world, but I trust Wilkie Collins as an author and I really want to read more of his work. So yeah, that's poor Miss Finch. The next one is called The Law and the Lady. And in this one, we have a woman who recently got married, but she soon finds out that her husband actually has a lot of secrets. So. She kind of like becomes an amateur sleuth and tries to figure out more about her husband and his life. And yeah, I heard this is one of the first female detectives, amateur detective, she's not really a detective, but one of the first ever written in literature. So again, Wilkie Collins, he's just, he's writing all these, um, these women that are strong and they don't just faint and need smelling salts all the time. And I really love that. So that's the law and the lady. The next one is No Name, and in this one we have two girls whose parents recently died, and they find out that they actually have no legal right to their inheritance. So um, they basically end up like, I think one of them ends up as a governess, um, and the other one is really bitter about losing her legitimacy. So yeah, I'm really curious to see how I think about this one. It's quite large, um, but yeah, Wilkie Collins, in my eyes, can do no wrong, so. I'm really excited about this one. And the last Wilkie Collins I got, this one I did get from a used bookstore and that's The Moonstone. 
And I know this one is a uh, mystery surrounding the theft of a jewel called the Moonstone. So it seems like a girl is given the Moonstone as a present, but then it's um, stolen. So this one is more of a detective story surrounding theft rather than murder, which I'm okay with. Again, it's Wilkie Collins. <laughs> that's all I need to know. So yeah, that's the Moonstone. So these next few books are more modern classics. And the first one is Footsteps in the Dark by Georgette Hare. Um, this one is a murder mystery that takes place in an, an old priory that is apparently haunted. So I'm really curious about that one. And then we have Powder and Patch, which is a Regency romance. So it takes place in the Regency era and she writes really funny stories. So I'm really, really excited to get into this one. And then the third one is The Black Moth. And this one is more of like a knight in shining armor romance, which is, it sounds silly. I'm, I'm down for it, honestly. It's Georgette Hare. I love her stories. I love her writing. So I'm really excited to read it. This next book is Hungry Hill by Daphne du Maurier. And um, she wrote the really popular book, Rebecca. And I did read it and I enjoyed it. I gave it a three star, but I think I was just not in the mood for a gothic novel at that time because I then read another book by her and loved it. I read Jamaica in, it was amazing. So I do want to continue reading her books. I want to read all of them if I can get to them. Um, and so yeah, Hungry Hill is just like an intergenerational story. We follow, I think, three or four generations of a couple different families. So this edition is just gorgeous. I, uh, I found it at a used bookstore and it's actually a second edition. So it, this was published a year after the first edition came out. And I just love how old and battered this is. It's so... It's so like fragile, I have to be so careful with it. But yeah, I'm really excited to get to this one. This next book is one that I heard a lot of good things about. Um, one of my favorite booktubers, Kate Howe, has talked about this author before, if I'm not mistaken. And I know uh, Kate, Katie from Books and Things has also talked about Barbara Pym. And this is Excellent Women by Barbara Pym. And so we have a couple who seems to be in a marriage crisis. And then we have this lady whose name is Mildred who decides to try to help this couple. She seems to be that kind of person that likes to get involved in people's business and I guess help them to the best of her abilities. I heard Barbara Pym writes really funny stories, so I'm really curious to see what I think. So these next books I'm gonna share with you are all mysteries and I'm just gonna go through them really quickly because there are quite a few here. So the first one is A Study in Scarlet and the Sign of the Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And these are the first two full length novels in the Sherlock Holmes series which I have read, I just didn't own a physical copy, so I have this now. Then we have The Valley of Fear, which is um, the next book that I need to read in the uh, Sherlock Holmes series. And this I plan on reading in December. And then we have His Last Bow, which is the, the very last full-length novel um, in the Sherlock Holmes series. I think there is a short story collection that comes after this, but this is the last novel. So once I finish it, I will have finished with all of the Sherlock books which I'm really excited to to be able to say because I it's been a it's been a fun journey with Sherlock um I think I do prefer the short stories to be completely honest but I am excited to continue with the series a series that I have not yet read from is the Peter Whimsey series and so we have the first book here Whose Body by Dorothy L Sayers um I heard really good things again another golden age kind of mystery series um with another beloved detective. So I'm really excited to get into this series. So these next books are all Agatha Christie's. So the first one is Elephants Can Remember. Then there's 450 from Paddington, Cat Among the Pigeons, A Caribbean Mystery, The Murder at Hazelmoor, which is also called The Sidiford Mystery, which I think most people know it by that title. The Mysterious Affair at Styles, which I have read, but I didn't have a physical copy of, and I do want to have uh, copies of all the Agatha Christie books. So there's that one. Hercule Poirot's Christmas, which I talked about in my last video. And the last one is Poirot Investigates. And this is just short stories featuring Hercule Poirot. Next, we have another book that I talked about in my December TBR, and that's Agatha Raisin and the Quiche of Death. So this is a murder mystery with an amateur sleuth. And the judge of a quiche making competition is poisoned by Agatha's quiche. And she stands by her innocence. And so she goes and tries to figure out who poisoned her quiche. Next, we have The Number One Ladies Detective Agency by Alexander McCall Smith. He wrote the very popular Flavia de Luce series, which I haven't read yet, so I'm curious to see what I think. Next, we have two books I'm really excited to get to. They are the second and third book in a series that I started, and the second one is The Curse of the Pharaohs, 
and then we have the mummy case and these are um in the amelia peabody series and i have read the first one which is um crocodile on the sandbank if i'm not mistaken and so in this series we have um amelia peabody who uh leaves england and moves to egypt and ends up um involved in some archaeological digs and murder and all that all that jazz so um, I really liked the characters in the first book. Um, I adored Amelia's love interest, and I'm really excited to see where the series goes with these characters. So these next three books are a trilogy, unless more books will be coming out, I'm just not too sure. The first one is Eggie Morton, The Body Under the Piano. Then we have Peril at Owl Park. And then we also have The Dead Man in the Garden, and this is the newest of the three. So I have read the first two books. I have not read the third one, and I am really excited to read it. I loved the first two. Eggie Morton is just the sweetest little girl, and I love um, amateur sleuth books. I just, I love characters who know nothing about, you know, being a detective, and they just go and solve murders, and it's just the best. So I'm really excited to read the third book and continue reading anything this author publishes. Next we have As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. I did talk about this in my December TBR video. It's the third book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder uh, series and really looking forward to it. I loved the first two books and this just continues with Pip's story. So yeah, I'm really excited to get into this one. So this next book is also one I talked about in my December TBR and that's The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Um, in this book we have four people in their 70s who for fun form a club and try to solve unsolved mysteries until one day they find themselves in the midst of a live murder mystery. So I'm really excited to read it. Next we have two books by Ruth Ware. So we have One by One and we have The Death of Mrs. Westaway and I've heard really good things about them. I did read The Turn of the Key and I enjoyed it. It wasn't terrible. I found that I really enjoyed Ruth Ware's writing style and the atmosphere she created. I just wasn't the biggest fan of the mystery. So hopefully these two are ones that I enjoy a lot more. Then we have one that I have heard many, many good things about and um, it's not something I would typically read, but I do want to give it a try and that's the one by John Mars. And all I know about this one is we have this technology that has come out which uses DNA to determine who would be a good match as like a, a partner, a soulmate, whatever you want to call it. So yeah, this sounds really interesting and I heard it's a really good thriller and yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So these next books I'm going to share are fantasy and then I will end off with historical fiction. So first I have Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross. I have read the three other books that she has come out with and uh, I really enjoyed the first two. I didn't hate the third one, it just wasn't for me, but I do want to continue reading her books. Um, I do enjoy her writing and this one just the cover obviously it's it's gorgeous so there was a bit of a cover cover by element to my reasoning behind this purchase but that's okay i am really excited to continue reading the books that she releases another cover by here i have is the skin of the sea and this is about a mermaid and that's all i needed to know why a fantasy about mermaids that's all i need to know <laughs> the next book i have here is once upon a broken heart i don't know anything about it other than it's um I think one of the characters is from the Carval series, which I really enjoyed, so I am really excited to read this one. Next we have Midnight in Everwood, which is a Nutcracker retelling, and I plan on reading it in December. Next is Piranesi by Susanna Clarke, and all I know is it's Greek myth, a house that is like a labyrinth, weird characters, that's all I needed to know, I was hooked. Next we have The Lost Queen by Sidney Pike. This is a political fantasy that is inspired by uh, Celtic folklore, if I'm not mistaken. So again, don't know anything else about it. Can you guys tell? I don't really look too deeply into book plots. Like I just, if it sounds interesting the first time I read the plot summary, I'm good. I'm sold. I will get it. So that's The Lost Queen. Next we have a dystopian sci-fi and this is the fifth season and I really like the way it describes the book on the back. So I'm just going to read that. It says, this is the way the world ends for the last time. It starts with a great red rift across the heart of the world's sole continent, spewing ash that blots out the sun. It starts with death, with a murdered son and a missing daughter. It starts with betrayal and long dormant wounds rising up to fester. This is the stillness, a land familiar with catastrophe, where the power of the earth is wielded as a weapon and where there is no mercy. That sounds really cool. And... Again, this is like a end of the world apocalyptic type book. And I heard it's second person narration, which 
I've never read anything like that before, so I'm really, really looking forward to reading it. Next, we have a duology. I just read the first book, and I'll talk more about it in my November wrap-up, and that is Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Groudon. This is an alternate history where instead of the Allies winning World War II, the Axis powers won. So now we have Nazi Germany as a power and the, J uh, the Japanese Empire as well. So in this book, a girl named Yael ends up taking on the identity of a German girl so that she can uh, win a motorcycle race and get to meet Hitler and then kill him. So she's part of the resistance. And yeah, this book was amazing. I can't wait to talk more about it in my November wrap up. And then the second book in the duology is Blood for Blood, which I literally just started and I hope I can finish it in the next couple days so I can also talk about it in my November wrap up. It's the first book ended on a cliffhanger. So this is just action. And yeah, the plot really picks up here. So yeah, I'm so excited to finish this duology. So these next books are historical fiction and uh, the first few have a uh, fantastical element to them and then the rest are just your traditional historical fiction. So the first one is Lost Among the Living by Simone St. James. I read The Broken Girls by this author and it's one of my absolute favorite books of all time. It just broke my heart. It was so hard hitting and emotional and I'm not into like ghost stories or anything but she uses the paranormal, I guess, to to talk about really deep themes. And it's just her writing is amazing. So this is another one, another story where um, this woman, she's mourning the loss of her husband, but she finds out that there are some secrets in his past and his family. And um, I'm assuming there will be some ghosts in this one as well. But Simone St. James is such a good author. And I plan on reading all her backlist books as well as the ones that she will continue coming out with. So this next book I got, it's magical realism, historical fiction, and that's The Muse by Jessie Burnton. Um, she wrote The Miniaturist, which I know a lot of people have read and I've seen talked about, but I don't, I haven't seen this one talked about. So I do want to read it and then I'll see what I think. These next two books I bought because I used to read the Outlander series. I think I read the first two books and I really enjoy the setting. I enjoy the time travel, that kind of aspect, but they were just way too smutty for me. So um, I was recommended Susanna Kearsley as an author, so I got two of her books. So the first one I got is The Shadowy Horses, and then I also got The Winter Sea. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to reading her books. Um, to me, they just like, not just the title, but in general, this kind of um, magical historical fiction, time travel aspects just they're, they're so like wintry to me that I, I will probably read them in January or February. So yeah, these are the two Susanna Kearsley books I got. So this next book I got, um, I found at a used bookstore and that is Not Our Kind by Kitty Zeldis. And um, the little blurb at the top says a captivating novel set in post war New York City, about two women from different worlds and the wholly unexpected consequences of their meeting. That's all I read before I decided to get this. Um, I haven't read a lot of World War II books recently, but before I, I really got into different genres, that's literally all I would read. It's just historical fiction and then mainly World War II was my thing. But again, it's like my first love, so I will always come back and read historical fiction. So yeah, I'm really, really excited for this one just because I haven't read a World War II historical fiction in so long. It's time. I gotta read one again. So next, I really wanted to get into more medieval and Renaissance historical fiction because I haven't really read anything from those time periods. And I heard Philippa Gregory is a really good author. So I decided to get The Lady of the Rivers. Um, I heard this is a good place to start with her Plantagenet series or is it the Cousins War? Yeah, the Cousins War series. So I think it's like um, two series kind of put into one and they it follows characters within like the royal families of Great Britain. So yeah, I'm really excited to get into The Lady of the Rivers. So I got this next book because I read Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetys and want to continue on with her historical fiction. And this is The Fountains of Silence and this takes place in post-war Spain. So I'm really, really excited to get into this one. The cover is absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, that's The Fountains of Silence. Another World War II historical fiction I got is The Forest of Vanishing Stars by Kristen Harmel and the only reason I got it was because Krista from Books and Jams sold me on it when she talked about it in one of her wrap-ups this year so that's all I know about it and I'm okay with that. <laughs> so yeah that's The Forest of Vanishing Stars. So the next book is The Russian Winter by Daphne Calatay 
And in this one, we have a woman named Nina who is living in Boston. And um, we have two other characters who discover some secrets about Nina's past when she was a ballerina in Russia. And um, it involves some jewels, I think, that she auctioned off. So these two people try to, I guess, discover more about Nina and about her past in Russia. This cover is just so wintry and I definitely want to read it this winter. And Russia is another place I love um, as a setting in books. So especially the Russian winter, just like the cold seeps into your bones. And I'm definitely a winter person. You know, not a lot of people can, can relate, but yeah, so that's the Russian winter. So this next book is um, one that I got for free. So I used to read these types of books all the time. Um, and after a while, they just get, it's, it's like the plot line gets recycled. So I tend not to read um, the specific subgenre, which is Christian historical fiction. All the love stories are the same to me, like the plot lines just recycled a lot, but I did get it for free. So um, that's To Steal a Heart. And this is the Bleecker Street Inquiry Agency series. And I did hear good things about it. I heard this author infuses a lot of like humor and comedy in her books. And yeah, this is about a girl who um, used to be a street thief and she ends up reformed. But one day uh, someone she lives with is accused of theft. So she goes to try to prove her friend's innocence. And yeah, she encounters more danger. And that's all I know. But I'm honestly, I'm down to read it. Like, again, I used to read these all the time. This like Christian historical fiction. I have a lot uh, not down here, but my upper shelves, I have a lot of uh, Christian historical fiction and I still do read them. I still do enjoy them, but I just need more space between them. Otherwise, it's like the same plot. At least that's how it feels to me. But yeah, so this is by Jen Tirano. I've never read anything by her. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what I think about this one. This next book is called Daughter of Cana and this is by Angela Hunt. So in this book, it follows the Bible story where Jesus was at a wedding in Cana and turned water to wine. And in this book, the protagonist is a fictional um, girl who was at the wedding, who was serving the wine with her twin brother. And so it's, I guess, her life story and her experience of seeing this miracle happen. And yeah, I've read Angela Hunt biblical fiction before and really enjoyed them. So I'm really excited to get into this one. Okay, the last two books, it's a lot to go over. Oh my goodness. So the last two books I have here are books that I've uh, heard about because of Kate Howe's channel. And she does these discussions um, after each book and I do really want to read them as well. They sound so cozy, just a small town, close-knit community, which sounds perfect. So the first one is At Home in Mitford by Jen Karen and then the second one is A Light in the Window by Jen Karen. And normally I won't get two books in a series unless I've read the first one and enjoyed it. So um, the reason I got both is because they were very very cheap at my local used bookstore. So yeah, I am really excited to get into this series and see what I think. Okay, that was a lot. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And if any of you have read any of these books, please let me know what you thought about them. And yeah, I'm really excited to get to all of them. God knows when I'll be able to. So yeah, that's all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you all have an amazing day, morning, evening, whatever time of day it is. I hope you're all doing well. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye.